More big news about the Russian DLC for Battlefield 1. A few weeks back, the first gameplay was shown of Lupkow Pass, revealing six new weapons coming to the DLC. Five of those were themed around the Russian faction, and the sixth being a variation of a secondary that we already have in the game, and that comes to the tanker and the pilot class. For Assault, we have the 1900 double barrel shotgun, Medic gets the Fedorov Avtomat, a fully automatic rifle, Support gets the MG14 Parabellum, the Scout gets the Mosin Nagant M91, and the All Kit Pistol is the Nagant Revolver. So that is the first five, and the sixth was the C93 Suppressed Carbine coming to the Tanker and Pilot. That leaves five more weapons. Well, thanks to Creeper Dorian at Simphic.com and a Reddit thread posted by Bleeding Uranium to the Battlefield 1 subreddit, thanks to those guys, it seems the other five weapons yet to be revealed have now been discovered. I don't have any gameplay of these weapons as the models don't appear to be in the CTE build that is currently running Lupkow Pass, but I do have the names and some brief statistics that have been taken from the game's code. So. Let's get to it. Okay, first up we have the Assault Class, and I've mentioned this weapon before, the Maxim SMG Prototype. This is a very, very rare weapon with only a couple of units known to exist, and simply, it's an MG-08 heavy machine gun squashed down into a much smaller form factor. It fits the 9mm Parabellum cartridge, that's the same as the MP18 SMG that's already in the game, but the rounds are fed through the gun from a box magazine. This magazine can hold several stripper clips of 10 rounds each, with a maximum capacity of 80 rounds. Considering each of these stripper clips needs to be loaded separately, I'm extremely excited to see what DICE have done with the reload animation for this weapon. Can you imagine how long it would take to reload about 8 stripper clips into this box magazine? Seems like it would take even longer than a drum magazine on a light machine gun. As it uses the same ammunition as the MP18, we can assume it will follow a similar damage model, but it remains to be seen if DICE will break that mould and do something different. The SMGs in the game right now all have similar damage models, and it would be nice to see that changed up a little bit. And considering this is a squashed down light machine gun, I imagine we will see a slower rate of fire, and that would then open the door to perhaps change up the damage a little bit. Nonetheless, it's awesome to see this weapon coming to Battlefield 1, after seeing so many community members mention it in comment sections on social media and on the forums. Next up, we move to the Medic class, and this one is a really far out there addition. I did not expect this one at all. This is called the General Liu Rifle, I think that's how you pronounce it, and yes, I didn't know what this thing was at either first of all. Having done a bit of research, this is kind of a cool rifle, it's a hybrid, bolt-action, semi-automatic weapon. You can switch between the two different firing modes, although I'm not 100% sure that DICE will include those in Battlefield 1. It would be a very cool decision if they did decide to do that. Designed in 1914 by Pratt and Whitney Tool Company in the USA, under instruction from General Liu, the weapon was supposedly the first Chinese semi-automatic rifle. Now, the intention was to have the US company make the prototypes and the machinery, and then get all that shipped over to China, where full production of the weapon would continue. It featured a six-round internal magazine, and if the rifle is set to semi-automatic, that would then fall alongside the Selbstlader 1906 and the RSC 1917 in Battlefield 1, presumably offering a good consistent damage model to compensate for the lack of rounds available before you have to reload. The weapon uses the same ammunition as the Mondragon and the Selbstlader 1916, however, so I can't say with much certainty whether the damage model will really be any different from those two weapons. The General Liu rifle had no other name, it had no military designation, and it didn't see that much action during World War I. The machinery was shipped to China in 1919 as arranged, but the ship sunk on its way over. The General suffered a stroke at this news, and that caused paralysis to one side of his body. 
Now this would be a very interesting rifle for Battlefield 1, not only due to that low magazine capacity, but if DICE did decide to add the bolt action functionality. Personally, that would be amazing, and potentially it would be the first bolt action outside of the Scout class. Moving on, the third weapon of the five mentioned in the code comes to the support class, so naturally it's going to be an LMG. This is the Perino Model 1908, an Italian-made weapon. Originally, as you can see from this picture, it was designed as a stationary weapon, but even in that configuration it weighed some 27 kilos and was extremely difficult to move around. A lighter, assault version was made and bringing down the weight to around 17 kilos which is you know still pretty heavy. The weapon fired its round from 25 round feed strips very similar to the Bene Merce gun but in its bipod mode it was fitted with this box that could fit five of these strips and that gave the weapon a maximum 125 round capacity. As each strip was used it would drop out of the bottom of the box and then the one on top would fall down into its place and continue firing. It would be very interesting to see DICE add that as opposed to another feed strip system, but who knows at this point. The fire rate was set to 450 rounds a minute, again very similar to the Bene Merce. Interestingly, despite the gun being made into an assault version, it featured no stock whatsoever. Imagine what that would do to the recoil. Weapon number four now, the new scout weapon revealed, I'm sure will make many Italian fans of Battlefield 1 very happy. We're getting the Vitelli M1870 rifle. This is the previous standard issue rifle of the Italian army used before World War 1 and it was replaced by the Carcano rifle. Many Vitellis were still used however and they went under various transformations to make them more suited to what was then modern warfare. Initial models featured a single shot firing mode but that was adapted to allow a four round internal magazine. A further model was then produced with a six round internal magazine and many of these four and six round models were given to Italian soldiers during World War 1 to use on the front lines. Now according to the Simthic report and the Reddit thread, it appears in Battlefield 1 that the Vitelli will come in infantry and carbine variants, similar to the SMLE, and that means the rifle will likely use the 4 round magazine options with the heavier 10.4 by 47mm cartridge. Perhaps this rifle will be a heavy hitter. Less rounds than most other bolt actions, but no mention of a variant with a proper scope on it. So maybe we're trading out long range effectiveness here for extreme close range power. Could be a very interesting weapon to try out this one. And last but not least, another tanker and pilot weapon here. This one makes me really happy. The Obrez. This will be a cut down, likely, Mosin Nagant rifle more suited to be held in a tank or a plane rather than the long rifle version. Far too fiddly if you're up there in the skies. These cut down rifles were given to tunnelers on the Western Front during World War I. The British cut down their SMLE rifles and allowed the tunnelers to use them if they came across Germans in the tunnels and they needed to take them down so they could carry on their work. And many Russian civilians would do the same to their Mosin Nagants in order to conceal them inside their jackets. In Battlefield 1, I assume they'd pack a huge punch at close range, but they'd be near ineffective on distant targets. It's almost a bolt action shotgun. Now at the moment, it's currently unclear if these five new weapons will join the other six as part of the Russian DLC, which you'll need a premium pass or the purchase of the DLC to access, or if these five will be free for all players. The other six that I mentioned at the start of the video are clearly going to be linked to the DLC as they're all Russian themed. But for the most part, these five others are not, and I'd like to think that DICE here will be offering them to all players as new unlocks. There has been a really big push since about February time for players to buy premium for Battlefield 1, and I've actively spoken against this push because I feel premium splits the community, and I think it would be better if maps and certain weapons were available to all. Many players simply don't want to pay more money for more content. That's fair enough, they paid £50, $60 for the game in the first place, and those players are the majority. 
season passes are only bought by a small percentage of the total sales of the game. And rumour has it that for Battlefield 1, that percentage is lower than it's been before in the franchise. People just don't like having content locked away behind a paywall. Here's an opportunity for DICE to offer something for free to all players, not just the ones who've spent more money by splitting these 11 weapons into some DLC and some free for all. Personally, I really hope they take that option. But there you go, we now know the 11 unique weapons coming to the Russian DLC, and that's alongside the new weapon skins I showed you the other day, and at least four unique melee weapons as well. Content galore. Let me know what you think of these five additions down below in the comments. I think DICE has answered the community's request quite well, but maybe you have a different opinion. Let me know down below. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.